time, running out, way drive and kick. Dragic blocked on the outside. Contact. Walker comes away with it. Dwayne Wade is beyond himself right now. I haven't looked at it. It's pointless now. It ain't gonna change anything. Um, I thought I did, um, but it wasn't called. So the Hornets beat the Heat for the third straight game. Wade goes up for the game-tying basket and draws contact, but no foul. Gabrielle Union is not happy, says there should have been a foul called, and voiced her opinion on Twitter defending her hubby. Absolute BS. They need to get fined, period, crappy. Officiating deserves a fine and a suspension, not after the fact. Oh, well. Stephen A., was Wade fouled? He absolutely was fouled. Skip, I watched this game. I watched the entire second half of this game. Uh, Got to give props to the Charlotte Hornets. Incredibly impressed. Give some love to Jeremy Lin, who was in attack mode all night long. And somehow, someway, with him and Kimball Walker on the floor, the Heat really seemed to have a problem defending these guys. No question about it. Nicholas Batum coming back, drilling a, a two pivotal threes. Uh, that definitely mattered as well. And, of course, uh, you just got to give a lot of respect. Uh, to what you're seeing from the Charlotte Hornets. But in that particular case uh, with Dwayne Wade, he clearly was fouled because Ze Zeller did have his hands up, but he also jumped and he jumped forward. So because of that, he assisted in the contact. And as a result, in that particular instance, Dwayne Wade was definitely fouled. Then you also have to take into account that he is a star in this league. He is a three-time champion. He is D. Wade, a future Hall of Famer. You are down two. And you have an opportunity in that situation to go through the free throw line. And worst case scenario, he goes to the free throw line and he has an opportunity to tie. There was really no excuse for this call not to be made, uh, but it was what it was. And I will say this, Miami kind of put themselves in this situation in this respect. I've been very underwhelmed by Goran Dragic and what he has done this year. He doesn't seem to be ambidextrous. He doesn't seem to be an individual that is nearly as potent offensively as I thought he would be. Certainly not worthy the 80 million that he's gotten. Props to Bill Duffy, the super agent, for getting him those dollars because I'm not sure he deserves it. I look at a guy like Joe Johnson, for example, who I believe is just smooth and silky and he's big time. But Joe Johnson, I need more than 13 points from you, bro. You can't just, you, you can't show up and and just leave it for Dwayne Wade to come to the rescue. Joe Johnson is more than capable of making noise offensively, significantly more noise than 13 points would illustrate. But in the end, the Charlotte Hornets deserve to be up 3-2. They deserve to be in a position to close out this series and advance for the first time in years. I'm proud of my man Michael Jordan and what they have done with this franchise. Steve Clifford, to me, is a really good coach. Uh, but in the end, it comes down to the fact that D. Wade was fast. Out. Gabrielle Union Wade, his lovely wife, my friend, was definitely right in what she was saying. Uh, but I will say this, for those that would go off about how she came across, she was actually very nice considering how she could go off. Because I'm here to tell you proof positively that she could have said a lot worse. And she is fully capable of saying a lot worse. Take it from me. Mm. Wow. Well, believe it or not, I also watched this whole game last night. I watched every dribble of this game because I have really liked this Miami Heat team all year. Unfortunately, they've lost Chris Bosh. And now I'm really starting to like these Charlotte Hornets. And I do agree with you. I immediately tweeted about the non-call. How can Cody Zeller get away with body fouling not just Gorn Dragic or something. It was Dwayne Wade. Has it come to this for 34-year-old Dwayne, D. Wade, that, that he can't get a call with seconds left at home in a pivotal playoff game? That's that's a rep call, right? Isn't that a reputation? Don't you just get no that question. because you're Dwayne Wade because you've earned it? And I'm not saying a gift call, but it's you, you know it. You've been watching this game for a long time. It's just an obvious foul. Anybody, I don't care who it was in that situation, it could have been Josh Richardson, I'm calling the foul on Cody Zeller. I mean, Cody Zeller didn't even start her for the other team, and he got exactly. away with that? Come on now. So I, I was just crushed for, for Dwayne because it looked like the refs have decided, eh, you're not what you used to be. We're, we're not going to give you that well, much respect and, and, anymore. 
Let me touch on that. Yeah. He shot 11 for 19 from the field last night, finished with 25 points. I think points. he's been really Skip good. Skip Bayless, if yeah. you watch Dwayne Wade this year, I'm sorry. I think he looks better this year than he did last Correct. year. Correct. He, I'm with he's you. He's lighter. Yeah. He's lost he about 10 to 15 pounds. I'm with he's you. He's got some spring in his step. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, these folks have, who have written off Dwayne Wade and said that his career has come to an end have been sadly mistaken. Yeah. He doesn't look like that at all. So, I, I mean, and then when you then when you combine that, Skip, that, let's keep in mind, it's 90-88. Worst case scenario is that if you give D-Wade the foul, which, by the way, he earned because he was fouled, <laughs> he has to go to the free throw line. He has an opportunity to tie it he does. and push it into overtime yep. or for the Charlotte Hornets to get a last shot. There's no excuse for this call not to have been made. Yep. It really isn't. I'm None. with you. And speaking of Goran Dragic... Pat Riley loves him some Dragic. You know this. He he raves yes. about him publicly. This is this was his target. He needed this guy to run his show. And I am with you, Mr. Smith. I'm not seeing enough, especially in games of this magnitude. I'm with you. It's all left-handed. And Look. I think Coach Spo was with you last night because Dragic in the fourth quarter played five minutes and Josh Richardson played 11 and a half minutes. Unfortunately, well, well, go ahead. Josh Richardson is playing better defense. He is. This is a fabulous is. young rookie. He's got tremendous potential. And by the way, he's looking better than Winslow. Yeah. Justice Winslow, you know how high I, I was on Justice Winslow. Yep. He is a stout defender. He's got a bright future as a defender. I hear but if you. he really wants to be a star in this league, he has got to develop a perimeter shot because the brother can't seem to shoot from the perimeter. Yeah. I, I, he's got to do something about that because he can defend and you need him on the floor. But I love this kid, Richardson. I am very underwhelmed by Goran Dragic. Nice guy, and, and you know how much I revered the great Pat Riley, who I had the pleasure of seeing in Game Five, you know, yeah. in Game Four in Charlotte when I was there the other day. But I don't care how much Pat Riley loves Goran Dragic. I don't, based on what <laughs> I'm seeing. It, the, the man needs to play better. I mean, I, yeah. my God, could, could could you use your right hand? Could you do something other than dribble and shoot with your left and go left all the time? Could could you do something? Mm -hmm. Because it's just a, and I feel bad because again, there's also it's important to bring up also, Skip, Chris Bosh is at odds with Miami yep. according to the reports, right? Because he believes he's ready to come back, and Miami is like, nah, you ain't coming back. Because those blood clots are nothing to joke around yeah. about, and we're not taking that chance right now. If Chris Bosh were playing, not only would I be predicting Miami to go to the conference finals, I might be predicting that they would go to the finals because on the roster as presently constructed, yeah. I believe they could beat anybody with Chris Bosh added with Joe Johnson. But still, Goran Dragic. Very underwhelming Got as it. far as I'm concerned. Very unimpressive. So here's what I saw in the fourth quarter last night in Miami, pivotal game. I saw the Hornets want that game worse than the home team wanted that game. I saw them scratch and claw and dive and, and bounce. and it, it, They just scrapped for that victory. They got all the loose balls. They got the loose rebounds. And... Thank you for bringing up Jeremy Lin. I occasionally go back and forth with my man Nelly, obviously a part owner with the great Michael Jordan, because I think their coaching staff gets driven a little crazy by Jeremy Lin. As you know, he plays a little recklessly. Sometimes he looks like he's completely out of control. All I know is when he comes on the floor, stuff starts happening. Well, it's not always great stuff, but, but a lot of times it's pretty good stuff because he just flat out attacks every defense. He's fearless, he takes some bad shots occasionally, but you gotta admit it, he makes more good happen than bad happen. Well, I'm glad you brought him up because I feel compelled to address this subject. When he was in New York and everybody was going off about insanity, I was like, pump the brakes. He can play, but he's no star. Y'all need to calm down and stop the nonsense. I stand by that. I've always felt that way, but I think people interpreted that for me saying he can't play. I never said that and never would. Jeremy Lin can play. Jeremy Lin is a spark plug. Jeremy Lin's got a lot of heart, Man. and he deserves a lot of credit. And when he is on the court with Kemba Walker, 
They seem to be a different basketball team against this Miami squad. And Nicholas Batum, huge pickup for Charlotte in the offseason from Portland. As far as I'm concerned, I look at the combination of those three on the court with Courtney Lee, I might add. It's relatively small. Don't get me wrong. But I just love the heart that they have. You're playing for Michael Jordan, as great as Michael Jordan was. What is what what is the top thing we raved about with Michael Jordan? He was an assassin. Yep. Wasn't scared of anybody. Had a uh, had a heart of a lion. He would come at you. And what I'm seeing, certainly no miniature Michael Jordans in terms of ability, but I'm seeing guys that got a lot of heart ain't scared of anything yeah, and agree. are willing to take on challenges. And I like that about Charlotte. Yeah. I like it a lot. You know, my phrase when I covered Michael in Chicago, my mm-hmm. phrase for him was supremely talented overachiever. Obviously, he was supremely gifted, but he played every night, every possession, just possessed to win the basketball game, played with rage to win. And that's starting to rub off on this basketball team. It's not the most talented team, but man, they play so hard with such heart. Lynn is a spark plug, but I like all of them. They're not afraid. And it looked like last night when Miami was up seven with what, nine and a half minutes left at home, I thought, yep. okay, you, you close this deal, right? They couldn't close the deal. And I'm starting to wonder about Miami's heart. Not, not, not that they don't have any, but they've lost some heart without Chris Bosh, obviously. So are they, are they to that point where they're saying, gee, we're just not good enough to pull this off even against this team? They're, they just well, want I it think, worse I think, than we do? I think, I think if you have a D-Wade, you have a chance. If Joe Johnson steps up and joins yeah. him, you have a chance. If I'm, Spo- if I'm Spolstra, I yeah. bench Goran Dragic in the second half, and I'm putting in this kid Josh Richardson because I like the way he defends, and he shoots, and he's got a lot of heart. Outside of that, I would say this. Kemba Walker is no joke. Now, I wouldn't say he's top five yet like some people have called up to my radio show and asked about because there is Russell Westbrook and Chris Paul and, and, and Steph Curry and, and, and Kyrie Irving and Damian Lillard. And, but Kemba Walker is no joke. Yep. This brother can play. And, and, he, okay. and, and guess what? He gets hot. You can't guard him. No, you can't, can't when he's hot. I agree. But you realize he went four for 18 last night and they won on That's the road fine. at Miami. That had That's something fine. to do with Jeremy Lin and everybody else. Batum made the threes. Marvin Williams made a big three. They all do little big things. Way to go, yeah. Charlotte. Don't hate on UConn, right. Skip. How did I hate on UConn? Kemba. He Joking. went to UConn? Oh, c- come on. I forgot about stop that. Stop it. Oh, oh stop it. On. Game six Friday in Charlotte. So we'll have more on the NFL draft coming up. These two will be live tweeting, which is always fun. But sometimes for those teams drafting tonight, it's tricky. Yo, Stephen A., Hit it. Let's go. This speech is my recital. I think it's very vital to rock. A rhyme that's right on time. It's tricky. Here Here we go. go. It's It's tricky to rock. A rhyme to rock. A rhyme that's right on time. It's tricky. Tricky, 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 tricky. It's tricky to rock. A rhyme to rock. A rhyme that's right on time. It's tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky.